Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm taking another revisited look at one of my old Academy tutorials. Now this tutorial was once a part of the six weeks masterclass which was designed to give you six individual techniques and in this tutorial it was all about ombreing. Now four and a half years ago when I filmed this tutorial, ombre was a, a big thing in the furniture painting world. I do think we might have moved on a little bit since then but nevertheless there's lots of useful hints and tips along the way in this tutorial. Also, it was um, a coastal vibe that I went for. I think four years ago, I was I had been to Greece twice, and I think that's where my inspiration came for this tutorial. It's all about the coastal vibes. So please sit back and enjoy the tutorial, and I'll see you on the other side. So let's get stuck in guys, let's talk um, the actual piece of furniture. This piece I picked up on a local selling site for about £20, which I thought was an absolute steal. It wasn't without some flaws, the veneer on the main panels, the grain had slightly raised, I think it had been stored in a damp space, but nevertheless it's perfect for this technique. Other than there's a lot of carved details, so if you're going to do coastal blend, and ombreing, maybe try and choose something with a slightly flatter finish. Although I do address this throughout the tutorial, you'll see how I get all of the paint into the details anyhow. Also prep work involved in this piece of furniture was virtually nothing. It was just a good old clean down, ready for that first coat of paint. So first things first, I would always give my ombre projects a base coat, something very neutral, either Paris Grey, French Linen, um, Country Grey. Country Grey is a great colour to knock out any of the orangey tones. So we're going to start by giving this piece a good coat of Country Grey. It might need two, but that will give us the canvas to start working our ombre over the top. Same as usual, get the paint on. This is literally your canvas coat. So cross hatching to work the paint into the grain to create that lovely flat canvas. So I'm stabbing the brush into these details to push the paint deep inside all of these carved details. It really does help with a medium sized Annie brush, we can create beautiful things. So whilst I'm kicking back waiting for my country grey to dry, I thought I might get out my art pad and try and work out the tones on here for the sky and the seascape. So all I'm gonna do is, like I'm gonna do with the ombre, is I'm just gonna damp my brush down and we're gonna start with the sky and I'm just gonna go straight into old white and I'm gonna put some old white as my horizon and then I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna, I've got a cloth here where I'm just moving some of the paint. I'm gonna pick up some Louis Blue and we're gonna go above I'm going to blend those two together. I'm happy with that. And maybe go for a little bit of Greek blue to bring up the tone. This is, remember, this is a, a, a stormy sky. Well, maybe not stormy. It's quite fresh, actually. I'm thinking this could be a sky in Greece with the Greek blue. I'm happy with that tone. So now I've got my sky tones, I think they really will work. We're going to put in sea tones, so I'm going to just clean off the brush a little bit and add, we're going to go with Oberson, so there's not going to be much Oberson, I want to be, in fact, in fact, I'm going to go for, with Oberson, I'm going to go for a different brush because I only want a little tiny bit. I'm going to pick up my art brush because when you look at a horizon, it's darker in the distance. So, we only need a minimal amount for the horizon. So that's as much as I'm going to do for my horizon. And then I'm going to drop into 
I'm going to pick up the other brush, going to drop into um, a bit of Amsterdam green. So we're going to see those greeny tones, in, rich greeny tones in there as well. And that's enough of that. So we're going to keep it very slim on the horizon, clean the brush a little bit. And then we're going to go for Florence. This is going to be really interesting. We're going to do bigger, uh, a larger amount of Florence. So it's a really Mediterranean looking sea that we're going to get here. Also, I'm going to just spritz my brush because it's drying out. So I'm going to spritz the brush. That's it. You don't need too much water to let this spread around the page. So after we've gone with Florence, I think we might try and pick up Greek blue again. I think we'll go back to Greek blue. Yeah, I'm happy with that. A little bit of Greek blue. Yeah, we definitely got the Mediterranean coastline. And we're going to have a little touch of old white. I'm going to pick it up with a spoon. A few little slashes of white in the distance and I'm happy with that. I think I've got the look of a Mediterranean Sea. So let's take the inspiration and we will place it right above the cabinet so we can refer back to this as we work. So this is what we're going to work to. This is our colour scheme. Are we nearly dry? We're very nearly dry, so we're pretty much good to go. And we're going to start with the horizon line first, the sky part of the project. So I've decided or preempted where this horizon line is going to go. And it's going to go right the way, just under this bit of um, carved details because there's a very flat surface here and we need as much flat surface because we're going to use masking tape to create that very neat line. So I'm going to start with my pure or old white, it wouldn't matter which colour, they're very similar in tone and because we've got a base coat on I'm going to go with pure so it's really um, bright and I'm going to work sort of I'm guesstimating at this level so I, all I'm going to do is literally we're going to just apply to this this level all the way along it doesn't matter if you go underneath that line because we're going to go over it with another color anyway so and to get the paint to flow a little bit I have got a damp brush you're always going to need on ombre you're going to need a slightly damp brush so we're going to work across this area and just build it up. I'm not going to worry about how far I go up. I'm just going to basically put a, a white band right the way around the piece. So this is the final flourishes of the pure or old white, if you want to use that colour. And whilst the paint is still drying, I'm going to use the same brush for the Louis Blue. So it's going to mix the tones on the brush and we're going to start the opposite way and work our way up to get that gradient of tone because here we have a lot of design in the, the carved detail so we're going to need to stab the Louis Blue into the, into the pattern but we're going to do the blending part on most of the flat. Now I'm going to take a small bowl and we're going to pour a little of the paint into the bowl and the reason I'm doing it into a bowl is because I don't want to be dipping my brush into the can and contaminating this can. So do, when you're doing this blending technique, either get a, a big platter with all of your colours on and work from one to, to the next colour and then you won't, you won't messy up your, your cans of paint. So here goes. Also, you may need to spritz your brush just to add some moisture to it. I'm spritzing the brush. I'm not spritzing the piece because adding water to this will pull away the original colours. So just keep this handy to make sure there's enough mo moisture in your brush. And we're just going to add a little bit of Louis Blue. And remember, this is her horizon line. I'm looking back to my inspiration that we did earlier on, and I'm going to leave a small gap running through. So we're going to start sort of midway, 
just by adding a little Louis blue. And I'm going to put a basic line in. We're going to need to spritz a bit more because this brush is drying out. So we're just going to keep on spritzing. See, and this is how I blend. So we need to blend it away into the pure. You might have to swirl your brush around in these tones here, into the, sorry, into the carved details. So that, that's a good way of getting into those details. Just swirl the brush, pick up a little bit more paint here, spritz the brush, blend. So if you spritz your brush, you're not going to apply too much water to the paint. So it will just loosen it enough to allow you to spread these colours around. And once we get sort of a dim line of Louis Blue into the pure, we will start building up the tone. So we'll allow it to have more tone to the colour. So we're going to pick up, I'll work on this section so you can see. So we're going to add more Louis Blue here, across here. And you can see a little spritz, blend it back into the other colour. Pick up some more colour into these corners, swirl it around, blend. Blend back down into the lighter tone. I hope you can see this on the camera. The colours are quite faint at the minute, so I'm hoping you can just see how we can get that tone. And we're going to work across the whole piece, around the sides, in the same fashion, um, and then we'll move on to the top I'll bring the camera up to the top so you can see the colours from the top down and the gradient. Now I'm blended relatively well between the original and the Louis Blue. We have got to contend with all of this detail, so I'm only going to use the Louis Blue into these details and then blend it back downwards into it. So we can use almost solid paint just to mat out, but I'm going to only go to the, the surface of the top because we're going to use the Greek Blue over the top and back into the Louis Blue. So let's just mat out. So you can scrub these bits out. If we was working on, on a more flatter piece, um, you wouldn't be doing this. You'd be carrying on with the blend, with your colours, picking up a little bit of the next colour as we go along. But because we have this detail, it basically means that I have to just mat it out only to sort of the, the top section we're going to work. But this is pure colour, there's no um, other tone into it. Whilst this is still wet, I can still blend, soften it in to the top of that door. Just make sure you get all of your detail covered out and pick up the top of that door again. See the, the brush technique, stabbing and circular motions will always help any detail mat it out. Whilst working on your ombre, always take time just to stand back and take a look. You will see any imperfections where, you're, you, know, where you might have missed it a little section. It always takes a moment just to stand back and work out how well you've blended it. I can see I've missed sort of little areas under here, so I'm just going to soften them in, and I'm happy with that. And don't fear, once this all dries, you can go back and do a little bit of dry brushing to blend the tone back in. What I've decided to do, because this is a three-dimensional um, shape, I've arced the Louis Blue in a semicircle on the top to, to blend around a corner. Here we have is the Greek Blue. There is, it's like a darker shade of Louis Blue. And all I'm going to do is, again, the Louis, Br Louis Blue brush, is, the paint's still in there, so I'm just going to spritz this, and we're going to just pick up a little, a little tiny bit of Louis Blue and we're going to use that to blend into the Louis Blue. So keep on spritzing, and this will help guide you to, to the blend. So I'm going to 
maybe just skim along the front edge as well. So you can just see that color picking up onto the front. And this is gonna help you get that flow to the paint. I'm picking up the Greek blue. I'm applying it. I can feel the tension in my brush. I can feel it dragging a little bit. So I'm adding more moisture to the brush and I'm gonna go below the line of where I've applied it. It's quite thick and I'm gonna soften that line and blend away into the other color. And then as we work to the back, we're gonna get more solid in its tone. Whilst we wait for the Greek blue to dry, the uh, pure should be relatively dry and we're gonna create the horizon line in the sea. So, as you can probably remember, we used um, Aubusson blue for this in a very thin strip. So, and I want it to be not as rough as that, I want it to be pure. So we're gonna use masking tape, which does worry me a little bit because as I said, some of this still feels a little bit moist. So I don't want it to peel anything back. But we need to prep for this. So how I'm gonna do it to keep it level, we're gonna use a piece of string and a tape measure. So I said at the beginning of the project, I wanted to um, put the horizon on this flat piece here. So we're gonna take a tape measure and we're gonna measure from the ground up, which takes me to uh, let's see, about 54 centimetres. And um, we're gonna mark out on the back of the piece, 54 centimetres. So 54, that's one mark. And we're gonna go to the other side. The same thing again. Um, 50, 54, right on the edge. Just a little mark, that's all that's needed. And we're gonna use our masking tape with our line and we're gonna stick it straight to the back of the sideboard. So take a piece of masking tape, find the end and find our mark and then we can take another piece of masking tape, bring the line as level as we can get it. We lost it. Just loosely, don't pull too hard or you'll pull it away from the masking tape. Find your mark on the other side, just a little bit of tension and stick in place. Then we will go back to the front and we're gonna just add another little piece of masking tape in the center. So that is giving me a fairly good horizon line. I will measure the corners and just alter it. So it was 54 and we'll measure the other side, 54. And now we're free to apply our masking tape. So when sticking your um, masking tape in place, Always make sure you push into these details. It's a little fiddly, and what you've got to make sure is each indentation in the, each door, the, the masking tape is well pushed into that groove, because otherwise you're gonna get bleed marks. So you may find this a little bit tricky, going over the lumps and bumps of the door frames, but it's worth taking your time to get this exactly level all the way around. This is the best bit, down to the paint. We're gonna start to paint in the horizon with Aubusson Blue. And I'm using a small art brush for this because I want the, the blend to be very narrow. It's only to add a touch of color to the edges. So all I'm gonna do is just literally skim over the masking tape just lightly working downward motions because I don't want bleed. Especially here on these corners where you know it's gonna connect with. So just a little bit of paint across here. 
Now for a touch of Amsterdam green, I'm using the same brush. I'm going to address this area that I slipped with. So we're just going to add the Amsterdam green over this area. I thought this would be a good time to interject right here. You will have heard me say that I'm using the same brush from the previous colour. This really helps with your ombreing and your blending techniques. You're carrying the previous paint colour into the next paint colour. Um, also, don't go and have a tea break in between your layers of changing colours because it really does help to work wet on wet when it comes to blending your tones together. These two colours are close and depth, so they're quite happy to sit together anyway. Um, I will carry on this and then we're going to remove the masking tape, fingers crossed. It won't pull all the paint off. That's enough of the Amsterdam green. Drum roll, let's, fingers crossed. So, I'm gonna take this section off first, but gently, gently does it. I'm gonna peel back, peel downwards, away from the top line. Yeah, not too bad, I'm happy. Yeah, there's a few little, little bits that we can go back and touch in, but mostly, I'm happy. We have a pretty much straight line across the whole piece. Right, whilst the paint's still wet, we're gonna move on to this, the next color in the list of colors, which is Florence. Um, I'm gonna decant to a bowl this time because we're gonna be mixing Greek blue beneath that color. So I just want this in a bowl. And we're gonna go back to spritzing the brush and using the Florence to blend the two together. So here goes, clean brush. It's a little bit damp, which is good for me. I'll, I'll give it another miss before we start because we're gonna blend these two colors together. So I'm gonna pick up some of the Florence, this is the fun bit, and we can just go. So this should blend quite nicely. So it, whilst the um, Amsterdam green is still got moisture in it, we're taking it across that. Be careful not to go over your horizon line. And we're just gonna blend those two colors together. What a fantastic color this is. As you can see, look, I'm adding water to the brush all of the time, just to allow the paint to have that freedom to spread and pick up the other color almost. Now, I haven't addressed the bottom colour. The country grey, as I look at it, it looks almost like sand. So we may keep some of this and blend away into this colour, or we, it just depends on the next layer. We'll see how far it looks and then stand back, check out the dimensions, whether it looks better as just all the blues and greens, or we'll keep, retain some of this country grey. We'll just see on the next layer. Now back to the Greek blue, time for the Greek blue. I'm gonna add this in. I'm gonna quickly do this one. Put the paint on. Just this front edge. See, eventually you'll pick up your confidence and go quick. So that's that. We're gonna, to blend it, we're gonna spritz the brush like so and blend into the other colour. So we're gonna blend it back up to the, to the green. Well, Florence, we're gonna blend it into there. So you're really working wet on wet. So get your paint on, work your brush from one colour to the other. If you're the first time at doing this and you're not experienced enough to, to do it in one go like I am, what I would suggest you always do is lay out your colours um, light to dark or dark to light and work your way down. It's when you're mixing tones from like, I don't know, if you went graphite to old white to um, Paris grey, it's going to get really murky. So lay out your colours so you can work out which tone comes next easily. I love some of these tones that are coming through. 
They're almost like purpley tones. I'm going to work off the excess off my brush lower down. I want to dry this brush a little bit just to tickle these back in. And if you kind of think, oh, too much, I've got my other brush because I've been switching from two brushes, I can come back in with this brush and save it. So it does help to have maybe two brushes on the go. I do do a class where I've done this only with one brush. I call it my one, br one brush blend. So you can do this, but it, again, it's about those colors. Choosing the colors in the right way will make this happen. And always, again, I'm gonna stand back. I'm gonna check where I feel it needs more tone. And I think, I think it's pretty good. We're just gonna keep on working it. We might add a bit more Greek blue here. I love the way that the Greek blue, you can see almost the purpley tones coming from it. And I think what, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna I'm going to lose the country grey. I'm going to go with pure or old white to the bottom on the next layer, which you're going to see right after this. So you can see there's still moisture from the Greek blue. And you can see I'm just picking some of the Greek blue up as I go along. Now, the reason I've gone I'm not keeping the country grey. I'm gonna, this is my sea spritz. So this is the waves, the tide of the piece. I followed true to my color combination at the top. So I'm gonna, what I might do is just add a few little tickles of um, pure within the seascape because I think that'll look quite nice. Even though I'm using pure, you, it looks as if I've got Louis Blue again. And that's because what was in the brush is from the previous colour. And that is what's helping the blending technique. I find it's the best way to do it is keep your retaining colour from before, or the colour from before, and allow it to be in your brush when you pick up the next colour. Just don't take it directly from your can, always take out of the can into a bowl and this should help. So what we might do if I've got a brush, this little chip brush, it's quite raggy, we might just pick up a little bit of paint and just do the odd C spritzy thing. So you can see my brush, what I'll do is I keep on wiping this brush clean taking some of the blue off, picking a little bit of pure and just, we're gonna purposely allow it to be sort of streaky across. And this is gonna add those sort of shimmers of C. So here, we're gonna go here, a bit up here. That adds the sunshine reflecting on my C. So I'm gonna play around a little bit more with this and then I'll come back to you and we'll talk about the hardware. And here we have it. We're at the final hurdle. Um, we're unwaxed at the moment but what I wanted to do is kind of think about which handles might go on the piece. Now these were the handles that were originally, there were little wooden, little wooden knobs which fitted perfectly and I could have painted them but there was two missing so we couldn't use them but they will go back in the drawer. I, I save all of my handles so I like to switch handles around different pieces of furniture but I, I was thinking with the, the colour tones, the colour palettes of this seasidey sort of um, sea spritz look I'm going to go with a, something that's a ceramic knob so I've got a few here, here's a crackle glazed one um, or I did consider maybe something metallic. Um, I wasn't keen on that. I just felt it didn't quite sit in. I'm more happy going with, a, I think, a plain ceramic to pick out the pure in the middle. So this is the, um, 
the, the plain ceramic, and I just feel that that would work so much better than the crackle glazed one, or, and you can see definitely on this colour, on the Florence, it really stands out. So this is the one that we're going to go for. We're going to wax the whole piece, add the handles, and we'll, we'll see the end result. That's the final handle in place. I couldn't be more happy with the end results of the piece. I have waxed the top half of this project. Uh, the reason I left the bottom half was because I wanted the wax up here to cure before I started bringing any of the, um, the darker tones up because if there's any dustiness to this, it could contaminate the pureness of this white. So all that's left to do is just add a final coat of wax up to the horizon and it's a wrap.